It is over, Eleven. Your friends have lost. We all know Vecna is absolutely terrifying, both on and off the screen. The fear was genuine, definitely very real. I was terrified. <laughs> but did you know he had over a dozen different looks? Number one, armor. Like, Vecna's not strong enough already. One scrapped design was inspired by a prehistoric fish named the Dunkleosteus. This massive fish swam through the ocean with rock-hard, bony plates covering its face and jaw. It was also super terrifying. It was supposed to be assumed that Henry had spent so long in the Upside Down that his skin had grown hard in a protective, armor-like way. The exposed flesh that is pale is uh, human skin that hasn't seen sunlight for the last 20 years. Number two, we definitely would have stocked up on Raid. This Vecna design didn't make the cut because it would have been difficult to pull off in a practical way. As we know, the Duffer Brothers prefer to do as much as they can practically. Our current Vecna is pretty much all practical. Michael Mar Jr. describes this version like some sort of praying mantis. This one leaned more towards an insect. It would have been much taller. The legs and arms would have had the ability to split apart. The chest would have opened up. Number three, we know the Duffer Brothers are huge fans of the Alien films. This look definitely goes for more of a classic, otherworldly scare factor than our current Vecna. This was Michael Marr Jr.'s thinking behind this look. The thinking was that the Upside Down would have transformed him over time into something closer to a Demogorgon than a human. Again, this one was scrapped because it limited Henry's facial expressions. Number four, but the real question is, would he turn into one of those demo bats? Apparently, in the early versions of the season four scripts, Vecna was depicted as being super pale, like a vampire. It makes sense given the fact that there aren't a lot of sunny beaches to catch a tan on in the Upside Down. Based on that, Michael Marr Jr. pitched a bit of an alternative look for Vecna. I pitched that the skin might actually be rotting away if someone was forced to live in the Upside Down for too long. Perhaps he would try and clamp the skin together to save it. Number five, it gives a whole new meaning to the term facelift. In Michael Marr Jr.'s TikTok video, he goes over a few of these nightmare-inducing Vecna designs that, in the majority of them, have skin hanging off of his face. Due to the long-time exposure from the Upside Down, his skin would have started to come off in patches. In one design, all of the skin was hanging off of his jaw, exposing the bloody, decayed flesh beneath. Number six, another favorite from the Duffer Brothers film inspiration. This version of Vecna had a patchwork of skin stretched over his body. Definitely a Hellraiser-inspired figure. In the 1987 film, Frank, the antagonist, comes back from the dead in this bloody, monstrous condition until he starts to consume his victims and regenerate. One thing that remains similar to our final cut Vecna, though, is his signature long, clawed hand. Matt and Ross were very clear that they wanted this um, large, distorted hand. Number seven, it's giving Voldemort vibes. As Michael Marr Jr. words it, he was considering a cloak and also playing with a polio type of gangrene. If you look closely at this design, you can see similarities within the face of the final cut of Vecna, particularly in the mouth and his lack of nose. Who do you think would win in a battle, Vecna or Voldemort? Let us know in the comments. Number eight, we're starting to see where the vines came from. This design emphasizes an oversized left arm with a protruding tentacle. The concept behind this was after spending so long in the Upside Down, Henry's body would have gotten infected with some sort of tumorous gangrene that would eat away at Vecna's flesh. Though this design was discarded, it definitely paved the way for all the scary appendages that Vecna sported throughout the season. Number nine, yeah, we definitely prefer the vines. It seems like the big theme of some of these early designs was the upside down slowly rotting away Henry's flesh. Michael Marr Jr. describes it as follows. Early iterations of Vecna had maggots infesting the cavity of his missing nose, as well as wiggling in the rot of his vine infected body parts. Number 10, of course, Predator has to be included in the Vecna designs. Not only is Vecna a vicious predator himself, I saw a means to realize my potential. But the idea behind him was that he was one of those villains that never runs after his victims because he doesn't need to. To become the predator I was always born to be. 
trying to explore the structure of his face and body that would depict such a villain, this design was scrapped because it was too much like Predator. Number 11. No big deal, just more terrifying decay. This is another upside-down decay-influenced design. Henry's body definitely endures some massive transformations throughout his time down there. Compared to Vecna's pale skin, the radiation rot would be an unsettling, bright red in contrast. Though they were definitely nightmare-worthy, they found that they didn't disguise Vecna's true identity well enough. They didn't want the audience to think the mild-mannered, orderly Henry could possibly be the series' major villain. Maybe we'll save that story for another day. It doesn't have a happy ending, I'm afraid. Number 12. Do you think Final Cut Vecna was tall enough? One of the earliest iterations of Vecna depicted his long, gaunt body as being much taller than the one we got to see. Everything about his body would have been expanded, including a mutilated, viney neck. Also, throughout the early envisionings of Vecna, most of the designs still had hair on his head. Eventually, throughout all the different transformations, they ended up doing away with that. Number 13. This one is serving nightmares. Even Michael Marr Jr. says he's not quite sure what he was thinking on this one. This design of Vecna even sports some spiky hands and shoulders just to add that extra touch of horrifying. It's safe to say that this design doesn't hold a ton of human elements to it. When somebody is filled with so much rage and so much resentment. They definitely wouldn't be sporting a 24-7 smile. See the human element's gone. Number 14. Somehow, this makes us appreciate the casual, less scary nosebleed. In these early skin-hanging designs, one of them showed Vecna with melted skin covering his eyeballs. According to Michael Marr Jr., for this specific design, he wanted Vecna to cry tears of blood every time his powers were used. The reason why these designs were cut was actually that it limited Vecna's ability to utilize his face for an emotional purpose. This brings us to one of the most important scare factors the Duffer Brothers needed to implement into Vecna's character. Number 15. We'll be seeing them in our nightmares for weeks. We talked a little bit about why some of the designs were scrapped. Quite a few due to the fact that we couldn't see Jamie Campbell Bower's facial movements. That was a major development when going through all of these villainous depictions. All in all, the more human version of Vecna that we ended up with was directly correlated to the fact that the Duffer Brothers wanted us to see Vecna sneering and smiling as he tortured his victims. You're going to look absolutely beautiful. We've got Alien, Predator, Hellraiser, Maggots, Tears of Blood, Hanging Skin, and honestly, way too much horror for us to process right now. That was so cool. <laughs> that was so awesome. We'll be having our own nightmares full of alternate Vecna designs for weeks to come. What's your favorite Vecna design? 